printing, or additive manufacturing to use its proper name, is creeping its way into our lives, whether you know about it or not. It's being used to print parts for cars, trainers, or sneakers for your feet, even food organs and houses, yeah. And while we've seen a few gadgets being printed for the bike over the last couple of years, I wondered, is there really a genuine future for anything more? Now, stay tuned and I will explain what it is, how different printers affect the end result, and what may be the future for 3D printing and mountain biking. Now, as always, don't forget to like this video or hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on more content like this in the future. Its proper name is additive manufacturing, but we often refer to it as 3D printing because the original printers would simply lay down a layer of material, much like a printer would lay down ink on a page, but that printer would continue laying down layers until it had created a solid three-dimensional object. This layering process is what often gives that linear grain to some of the finished objects. There are three main types of additive manufacturing processes. That's extrusion-based, resin-based, and powder-based. There are also plenty of subcategories under those, but I'm just gonna keep it very top level here. Now, extrusion printing is the most commonly used method as it is comparatively fast, affordable, and the material used are safe to work with. This method usually involves feeding a solid material into the printer, heating it up and effectively extruding it out as needed. A bit like a complicated glue gun, I guess. Think of this as an alternative to injection molding plastics. However, it's worth noting that entire houses are currently being printed in a similar fashion from cement and sand mixes. Resin-based printers use specialist liquid resins poured into the machine, and the resin is then hardened by UV light a layer at a time. Like extrusion printing, it's also pretty safe to work with, but it lays down much finer layers, which means it takes much longer to print, and the cleanup and curing process afterwards only further adds to that time, complexity, and cost. However, this process does give much better detail and a finer quality finish that you can barely tell is printed, something we've recently seen with the Specialized and Physique saddles. Powder-based additive manufacturing works with a bath of extremely fine powder. A laser then cures a section of it, which matches the cross-section of the object needed. And this occurs over and over until you have a solid object suspended within the powder. The object is then pulled out and the rest of the powder is blown away. Now, with this method, you can use material like nylon or metal powder and create extremely detailed objects, much like Silka's latest titanium Garmin mount, the Mensola, with all of its complex internal truss work, a design that was only made possible by this method and couldn't have been done with a mold. Think of this method as an alternative to CNC machining, but it can supposedly create more complex structures with much less wastage. However, the powder can be extremely expensive and protective masks and clothing is required for anyone working with this material. Outside of the biking world, it's no longer a groundbreaking production technique. Companies like Adidas and Nike have been printing the soles of their footwear for years, uh, given unparalleled comfort and energy return properties, apparently, not to mention increased speed of production. 3D printing in the bike world has to date been rather small scale, with small companies bringing things like custom Garmin mounts to the market. And more recently, desktop 3D printers have become a relatively affordable home gadget. And thanks to websites like Thingiverse, you can actually select designs for free and print them out yourselves. And I'm not just talking about bike-shaped key rings here, I'm talking about hard to find tools like a Suntour fork cap socket or a Shimano crank cap tool. 
Even Hope Technology have acknowledged this movement by releasing open source tool designs for their brakes, offering you the ability to print out pad spaces and even piston servicing aids at home. So a desktop printer is a cool thing to have around if you, for example, lost a bar end or you suddenly need a custom fit mug guard or whatever. But as these home printers are extrusion based, you're largely limited to small plastic items with not too much strength or detail. But could this change in the future? Meanwhile, pump and tool manufacturers Silka have already invested in two state-of-the-art direct-to-metal laser sintering machines for in-house production in the USA. And they are already using them to create premium tools, Garmin mounts, and even mountain bike cleats, all printed in titanium. This powder-based technology could be a doorway to building light yet strong bike parts, as printers can build complicated patterns and honeycomb structures that effectively add stiffness where you want them, but flex or minimal weight everywhere else. High-end titanium bike manufacturers like Moose already understand the benefits of printed some complicated parts like dropouts and frame junctions but it also suits their custom geometry program as changing bottom bracket drops and chainstay lengths means that things like brake mounts vary almost infinitely. So with a custom 3D printed part, brake mounts are always where they need to be and dropouts always line up. However, atomized titanium is still crazy expensive, something like $500 a kilogram. So we might not ever see entire bikes printed with titanium for mass production, but really the reality is titanium tubes are already pretty good and adding time and complexity to simple tubes only adds unnecessary time and cost. In the world of resin-based manufacturing, Specialized and Physique have already proven that 3D printed saddles go way beyond the scope of conventional foam seats. 3D printing is not only faster than molding, but the layers mean you can build complex structures and textures that a mold just wouldn't allow. This has led to them printing saddles that are infinitely tunable in terms of density throughout the seat pad. The specialized mirror saddle has 22,200 struts and 10,700 nodes all working to support sit bones and maintain blood flow. However, they currently come up with a huge price tag of around 400 notes. And Specialized did release a budget MTB saddle at about three quarters of the price recently. So maybe the cost will come down eventually. But also bear in mind that these companies can now test a saddle on the road. And if any changes are needed, they can theoretically print a new version overnight for the next day's test. So think what that will do for lead times on development, something that often takes a couple of years to fine tune from prototype to end product. The first 3D printed mountain bike was alleged to be the Empire Cycles all mountain bike in 2014. The bike was additively manufactured from titanium in sections and then bonded together. Now at 1400 grams, it's not the lightest on the market, but it certainly makes for an interesting concept bike when it comes to the off-road riders desires to have a bike that is strong yet compliant and comfortable through rough terrain. More recently, we've seen companies like Robot Bikes, as Neil spotted in a show in 2016, uh, which look very similar to Atherton's recent release. And these guys use a combination of carbon tubes bonded with lugs that are additively manufactured from titanium, a setup that lends itself really well to custom geometry and sizing, but also allows companies like Atherton's to keep production in-house instead of outsourcing to a carbon manufacturer abroad like most other companies. Outside of lugs, 3D printing has been used to create carbon layout molds, which has certainly reduced costs for new frame manufacturing. But Silicon Valley startup company Arivo claimed to have printed the world's first carbon bike. Their initial concept frame was claimed to cost only $300, achieved by reducing manufacturing time from 18 months to only 18 days. 
And consider when you remove the human element from production, you reduce errors and reduce waste as well. However, this prototype was not like your standard carbon frame. It was effectively a thermoplastic and composite mix with carbon fiber embedded within it by use of a laser. And this means there's still some work to be done to figure out how to print these frames to the same lightweight and quality that we're used to with our current carbon fiber frames. As it stands, their last attempt at a production frame in connection with Superstrata is a road frame that weighs 1.5 kilograms and starts at 3,000 pounds. So uh, not exactly competitive just yet. So in terms of bikes, I feel like it's unlikely we'll see carbon competitively printed in our lifetime. However, the possibilities with metal gets me far more excited. This year, Canyon released images of a cross-country mountain bike frame additively manufactured from aluminium. Now, the Canyon Ride Green project was initiated by Bike Magazine Germany, who were on a quest to create a sustainable bike. Additively manufacturing not only shortened lead times and allowed regional production to save on the frame's carbon footprint, but without the constraints of conventional tubing, Canyon were able to make this aluminium frame weigh just two kilograms thanks to tubing wall thicknesses of just 0.6 millimeters in some places. Although Canyon say that the method is not yet viable for mass production, the idea of a lightweight, strong yet comfortable aluminium frame is very compelling. And frankly, I think that bike looks absolutely stunning. So what do I think is in our future? Well, it's not ridiculous to think that whole frames might be 3D printed at some point. Brands are already creating concept bikes to test the theory. I think carbon printing is a long way off, but metal might actually make a comeback. Seeing as saddles are a big win in terms of support and comfort already, I'm thinking why not tires? <laughs> a 3D printing company called Big Rep already created a commuter tire and a motorcycle tire as a concept. So why not mountain biking? Hunt are already printing wheels. Um, okay, so they are made of plastic and they're just models to prove the aerodynamics of a design before laying them up in carbon. But hey, who's to say aluminium rims won't be printed soon enough? In my mind, I'm already imagining walking into a bike shop, getting a bike fitting and choosing the geometry and the materials of my bike and then coming back to collect it a few days later. Check this prototype out. Okay, this is just a toy frame created by a GMBN fan. But tell me you wouldn't buy a translucent evil offering with custom geometry if you could. I mean, I would. Also, imagine a world where every bike shop had a 3D printer, where you could walk into a shop and get exactly what you wanted every time. And imagine ordering products online where they're always in stock because, well, they're made to order, um, printed right there and then. And what if every mechanic had a 3D printer too, so that when your beloved bike needs a spare part, you won't have to wait for it to be ordered in. Actually, better still, imagine you need that part or even a specialist tool that you don't yet possess and you just print it out right there in your house. Now, that's not a bad world, is it? As always, join the debate down in the comments below. Are you pro printing or are you a 3D skeptic? Do you have anything 3D printed already on your bike? Either way, if you'd like this content, do go ahead and give us a big old thumbs up.